image reconstruction from astronomical interferometers using implicit neural representations. Astronomical interferometry is a technique in which a group of telescopes can all work together to approximate one single much larger telescope. This results in very high resolution images of astronomical objects. The trick is to use interferometry, which combines different signals measured from pairs of telescopes and is most commonly used in radio astronomy. The angular resolution from an interferometer can be higher than any other type of telescope and is determined by the wavelength and the maximum distance between two antennas in the array. For ALMA, this is around 16 kilometers, allowing us to observe objects such as planets forming around other stars. And for the Event Horizon Telescope, our aperture becomes essentially as large as the Earth, allowing us to take this incredible image of a supermassive black hole at the center of a distant galaxy. So how does interferometry work? Let's say you have a pair of telescopes separated in distance by baseline B. The incoming wavefront will reach the first antenna slightly earlier than the second one due to the speed of light. We can then combine the signals from the two antennas to get a quantity called the visibility. The key point here is that each baseline between two antennas gives us one measurement V, which is a complex number. So how is this value relevant to astronomical imaging? The key to astronomical interferometry is the Van sittert zernike theorem. This theorem states that the visibility space is actually the 2D Fourier transform of the astronomical image. In other words, every pair of telescopes gives us a sample of the Fourier domain of the image, and we can go to and from these two planes via Fourier transforms. As an example, Say we're observing this MNIST 4 digit with an array of two telescopes. The panels in the top row are the image plane, while the bottom row shows their corresponding 4A space, or UV plane. The left column shows the original image, the middle column shows the UV sampling mask, and the right column shows our measured visibilities. Taking the inverse Fourier transform of our visibilities gives us a reconstructed image called the dirty image. This one's pretty bad with only two telescopes. However, if we continue adding more telescopes and use the rotation of the Earth, we can greatly increase the number of baselines. We can finally recognize the reconstruction as our original source image. However, it's still quite noisy due to the fact that we can only sparsely sample this Fourier space. And this is the key problem to imaging. One approach for better image reconstruction is the CLEAN algorithm, which is the de facto standard used in astronomy. To quickly summarize, CLEAN approximates a deconvolution by iteratively subtracting emission from the dirty image, while at the same time building up a model of the real emission. It can produce good results, but it requires carefully selecting areas to apply the algorithm, which requires experience and time and can vary from person to person. Another idea is to work directly in Fourier space. Using the sparse samples, one can try interpolating to fill in the Fourier domain. While this idea is good in principle, in practice, the results are generally not better than the dirty image. So this was the primary motivation for us to consider a machine learning approach, one that can take sparse measurements as input and produce dense, continuous output. Our method is built on the neural implicit function. For 2D image, the traditional representation encodes the image as a discrete set of tuples. For each tuple, it includes the pixel position and the image intensity corresponding to that pixel. Usually the pixels are 2D regular grids for an image captured with a megapixel camera. On the other hand, with implicit representation, the image is represented as a continuous increasing function, rather than as discrete tuples as in the traditional case. 
In our case, we use a neural network to model the function and call this function as neural implicit function. Given a pair of real value 2D coordinates, the function maps the coordinates into the corresponding value. Recently, the neural implicit function has been successfully applied to model the 2D images as well as various kinds of 3D data, such as 3D shape, MI reconstruction, and modeling the radiance fields for inverse rendering. As we mentioned earlier, the neural implicit representation can be used to encode a color image. In that case, the input of a network is a pixel location and the output is a pixel intensity in the three color channels. Similarly, in our case, we can use the neural implicit function to represent the complex value UV visibility map. In our case, the input is a real value UV coordinate and the output of the network is a complex valued visibility at a corresponding UV coordinate. Given the sparsely sampled UV visibility in a spectral domain, our goal is to recover the dense UV visibility. Generally, our method consists of two stages. The training stage where the parameters of the network are optimized. The inference stage where the uh, dense UV visibility map is recovered given the estimated network parameters. In the training stage, given the UV coordinates of a sample visibility, the network predicts the corresponding values. Since we have the measurements for the input coordinates, we can compute the construction error for the measured UV coordinates and use this error as a loss function during optimizing for the network weights. In the inference stage, for any queried UV coordinates, given the optimized network weights, we can get its corresponding visibility even if the queried UV coordinates is not sampled in the measurement. Here is a more detailed illustration showing our pipeline to estimate the network implicit, uh, to estimate the neural implicit function. We model the measured visibility as an uh, elemental wise dot product between the given UV coverage mask and the unknown latent uh, visibility map. Given the sparsely sampled visibility map, for each, visib uh, for each visible point in a spectral domain, its UV coordinate is fed as the input into a network. The corresponding complex valued visibility is predicted by the network given the UV coordinate and its weights. We used the batched UV coordinates as an input to take the advantage of the parallel computation from a GPU. More specifically, the network consists of a positional encoding layer and a fully connected three-layer multi-layer perception, or LLP. The position encoding layer encodes the UV coordinates into higher dimensional coordinates, such that the high-frequency pattern in the spectral domain can be modeled. The MLP uh, takes the input, the uh, encoded UV coordinates, and outputs the value corresponding to the uh, input UV coordinate. Unlike sparsely sampled visibility map, the fitting into the dense UV grids into, neural map, uh, into the neural implicit function, we can get the densely sampled visibility map. To optimize the weights for the network, we compute the reconstruction error over the sampled UV coordinates in the measurement. Then the error is propagated through the uh, layers of the MLP to update the weights. The setup just described allows us to learn the weights of a neural network that allow an accurate mapping between the UV coordinates and the complex visibilities in the spectral domain. However, the weights of this network will be fit to a particular set of observations and cannot generalize. Therefore, we need to introduce a meta-learning procedure that, given a large amount of observations, we can learn the appropriate data priors. For this proof of concept, our astronomical observations are all synthetic and consist of eminence digits from the training set split. We encode the synthetic observations with an encoder. This encoder generates a latent code Z, which we use as a conditioning factor for our implicit network in green. Our meta-learning phase therefore consists of learning from a large number of synthetic training observations given random UV masks. 
Additionally, we use a variational encoder with a zero mean isotropic Gaussian prior. Similar to a VAE, our latent code then becomes a random sample from a mean and variance prediction from the encoder. Using the same reconstruction loss as before on the complex visibilities, we now have an added KL divergence loss between the mean and variance predictions of the encoder and our prior. Via the reparameterization trick, we can backpropagate these random latent samples to train the encoder weights. This means that during the meta-learning phase, we can train both the encoder and the implicit network that it conditions end-to-end -end over a large set of synthetic observations to learn a latent space of conditioning factor Z for our implicit network. Finally, at inference time, we freeze the weights of the network and search for the best latent code Z that agrees with the sparse observations given. Because of the KL divergence loss, our latent space is well regularized to approximate the prior normal distribution. Thus, while optimizing for Z, we can further constrain the norm of Z to stay close to zero, ensuring a conditioning factor that will not be out of domain with respect to the learned prior knowledge during the meta-learning phase. Here we're using the actual UV mass from the Event Horizon Telescope data. The corresponding dirty image, the uh, inverse Fourier transform of the visibilities, contains very little information about the ground truth signal. Our neural prediction, however, can be as arbitrarily dense as we like, providing us with an inverse Fourier transform that well recovers the observation in the spatial domain. Compared to the ground truth, we can see that our method is able to accurately fill in the gaps in the UV data. Because the implicit network meta-learns over many different types of observations, the sparse dense visibility inference generalizes to any data from the previously unseen test set. And not just with the event horizon uh, UV data, but also with arbitrary UV masks. Next, we compare against some baselines, again using the EHT UV data. One common sense baseline might be to perform a straightforward interpolation of the visibility data. Here we show nearest neighbor interpolation linear and cubic. We can see that these methods fail in such sparse visibility regimes. However, the implicit neural network, which has learned strong priors for spectral reconstruction, can do a much better job, making a prediction that well matches the ground truth. Another common algorithm is the clean algorithm, which tries to heuristically deconvolve the spatial domain observation using the dirty beam inferation. We can see that this method also fails to capture the underlying structure of the true observation. Here we show uh, more examples against the interpolation baselines, the output of the clean algorithm. Using our proposed meta-learning implicit neural network approach, we can recover more details given very sparse sets of complex visibilities. Some final remarks. Implicit neural network representations offer a completely continuous paradigm for arbitrary sparse students inference. Meta-learning over these neural representations enables complex data-driven prior knowledge to be embedded into the system. Inference time latent optimization facilitates interferometric reconstruction even in very sparse UV visibility regimes like the EHT data. Going forward, we will explore using data sets that more realistically resemble astronomical observations or data sets based on actual astronomical data. Though currently just a proof of concept, our initial results are a promising first step towards neurointerferometry which will remain an important problem in the future as new arrays are currently being built. Thank you.